Number 42. Why does one mole of sodium chloride depress the freezing point of one kilogram of water almost twice as much as one mole of glycerine? Anybody know that song? I might have just butchered it, but great song. But we'll call this glycerin. Okay, so why does one mole of sodium chloride, now sodium chloride is NaCl, right? NaCl, sodium is in group one, that's a plus one charge. Chlorine is one of your halogens, uh, it's in group 7A or 17, so that's a minus one. One and one is just NaCl. So we have NaCl, depresses the freezing point. Now, in chemistry, if you're depressing, that means that you're lowering. So sodium chloride can lower or depress the freezing point of water, in this case one kilogram, almost twice as much. So that means that the freezing point will go down twice as much if you add sodium chloride as if you add glycerin. Now glycerin, just know, is C3H8O3. So we're dealing with NaCl here versus C3H8O3. Now it seems like we have the same amount of each component, right? We have one mole of sodium chloride and we have one mole of the glycerin. So that is no difference. But there's gotta be a difference um, as opposed to why sodium chloride could bring that freezing point of water down twice as much than the glycerin. Well, if we are talking about a freezing point and we are depressing the freezing point, this is known as a freezing point depression. Now just know that if you are adding solutes which is basically a, you know, sodium chloride, to a solvent, which is the liquid medium, which is water, your freezing point will always get lower. That's why, you know, in the summer up here in the northeast of the United States, uh, when it gets, when there's a snow advisory, um, the towns go around and put salt, NaCl, or sand, on uh, the 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 roads, mainly salt, is going to lower the freezing point of water. Because if you're lowering the freezing point of water, you need a lower temperature to freeze the surface. So that's why they put salt out on the roads, because they want the, the water, you know, the snow that's coming down, to freeze at a lower temperature. So gives you more of a chance that it's not going to freeze on the roads and you won't slip. But anyway... Um, so why does NaCl lower the temperature twice as much, the freezing temperature, as glycerin? Well, it comes from the freezing point depression formula, and that is this. So relatively a new formula here, but delta Tf equals Kf times this cute little italicized M times I. Now the delta Tf is the change in the freezing point. Change in freezing point. And from the salt to the glycerin, there is going to be a difference in that change. The NaCl can change this value twice as much than the glycerin. So that means that there's something has to be on this side that is different between the two of them. Now. This lowercase m is molality. And molality is always equal to the moles of the solute divided by the kilograms of the solvent. But in this case, they told us that for both of them, we had one mole of the NaCl, one mole of the glycerin C3H8O3, so that's the same amount of moles, divided by, um, you each have one kilogram of water. So the, molar the molality of both of these is going to be the same. 
because we have the same number of moles and the same kilograms. So this can't be the change. So now we're down to the KF and the I value. Now a KF is the depression constant, the freezing point depression constant for a specific solvent. The KF values are only for your solvents. There is no change in a KF for your solutes. So for this case, since both solvents is H2O and H2O, the solvent is the same. So that has nothing to do with it. It's got to be with this I value. Well, what is an I value? Well, an I value is called a Van Hoff. I think it's Hoft factor. Actually, I think that there's a Hoff. The T is the after the Van. So Van Hoff factor. Okay, so the I value is called a Van Hoff factor. But basically, what this means is how many ions dissociated in your or in the solvent. Now in this case, NaCl, I got a metal and a nonmetal, so this is an ionic compound. And ionic compounds love to dissolve in water. So NaCl will break down into Na plus and Cl minus. Now you have two ions, Na plus, that's one of them, and Cl minus. This is going to give us an I value of two. If I'm looking at glycerin, C3H803, this is all nonmetals. These are covalent. And covalent compounds do not dissolve in water. Remember, like dissolves in like. So your polar, your polar uh, covalent uh, materials, uh, they're not going to dissolve. You're going to break down your ionic ones, but the covalents are going to be strong. So that means that you're just going to have this in there. So your I value would be equal to 1. You only have one substance. So maybe what I'll say, you know, Van Hoff factor is the substance is dissolved. Uh, the, uh, you know, this technically isn't an ion, but it's basically just how many substances you have in your solvent. And that is why 2 versus 1. This will depress the freezing point. So I'll just say Fb 2 times more. So why does one mole of sodium chloride depress the freezing point twice as much? Because you have twice, so NaCl has a, an I value of 2. You have twice as much or twice as many ions in solution. And that is the answer. Let's box it off, and we are good. What'd you think? I hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Thank you for tuning in and, you know, checking checking the, uh, the question with me. Um, I hope you're having a great day out there. Keep studying hard, and I will see you in the next lesson. Okie dokie. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.